Biofield Sciences UK and India. Now, uh, he's, uh, he's also an official representative of UN NGO. We welcome you, sir. Thank you. So you're going to do my slides, I'll just say next, next. I'm coming here wearing a few hats, but I will say I've been in India for 29 years, and that's probably older than many of you, not most of you. Um, I am founder of an organization called the Energy Medicine Exchange. So if you're on Facebook and you're interested in my talk today, then please have a look at this group. Um, I also work um, for an NGO um, which is a member of the United Nations group and I serve the Foundation of Alternative and Integrative Medicine. But I've spent 20 years at Pune at MIT doing research into biofield science. Next slide. Not so clear my pictures, you can see that one, oh, it's black and white. But anyway, this is three different ways of looking at an orange, okay, the fruit. And in modern um, science, we're very much interested in developing technologies that allow us to peer inside, inside, peer inside. Um, but this is a, a very interesting image. It's an electrographic image, and it shows the bioplasma, the bioplasmic field. Next slide. And this bioplasma is um, emitted from the human body. We're very conscious of the four states of matter, solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. So this is not being well understood by modern science, but it's a very significant part and aspect of the human being. Next slide. And so what we're proposing is that the human body is not just up to the skin. We have an atmosphere, very much like the planet has an atmosphere. Next slide. And in fact, we have to rely on different sources for this information. Here we can see the human body, but here we can also see these energy centers and even uh, what we call marma points. Now this word marma is from South India and it refers to certain points on the body surface. Next slide. So all traditions have an understanding of this field, what I'm speaking about, but scientists have had to wait for an industrial age, a technology age, and now super technology, fast computerized, I use nonlinear programming, to measure and image what until recently has been invisible. But we've known about it. Next slide. Um, when we go to the work of the Rishis, we realize these are, these are maps and the number of petals on each chakra, what they call, actually relates to the frequency. So if we have a sensitive enough device, we can develop predictive diagnostic equipment using what is the treasure chest of ancient Indian knowledge, which is encapsulated within Ayush. Next slide. My technology allows us to see the chakras live in real time. So we can see whether someone has a congestion in their Manipur chakra. And this will happen long before there's any disease. But if we don't address this issue, then it becomes disease. That's why this is a predictive imaging technology. Next slide. It's a live system, and so we can even observe when individuals are treating someone correctly. Is someone's uh, psychological problem treated correctly with allopathic medicine? Or is it better to use different therapies? This is what we're discovering. Next slide. 
the science behind this field is very strong, and yet I'm always surprised when I come to institutes in India that they're not honoring this ancient knowledge which is in the treasure chest. But I'm hoping my presentation inspires you because what we're seeing here is the biophotons leaking from the smoker's fingers. When you're smoking, this chemical is damaging the very subtle etheric membrane. And so we can see these biophotons leaking out. Next slide. Why that's significant, of course, is because we're beginning to understand the biofield has different layers. In my technology, we can see these, what we call nadis. In the Vedic science, we have 72,000 nadis. But they're also the same as the meridians in oriental medicine. Next slide. Again, with our technology, this lady would, this is somebody's knees. She, she's not getting a good um, diagnosis from the doctor. He says, and there's nothing wrong with your knees. But with the biofield imaging, we can see these early warning congestions, which may be caused by something like a lack of grounding. And if we don't understand what is grounding, then we have to go back. Next slide. So this is another machine which shows what is a marma point. So we've now moved from this conceptual civic, Yunani, Ayurvedic science to technology which is sensitive enough to measure what is, as I said, thousands of years old Indian knowledge. And it's interesting that Indian government 10 years ago was spending 97% of its funding on allopathic medicine and only 3% on Ayush. So it's actually up to young students like you to show initiative in driving what is the healthcare vision. We should integrate this knowledge. We should integrate it. Otherwise, you're missing an opportunity. Again, you can see this is a, a, one of these 72,000 channels. Up till day, you thought they were maybe energy channels or they didn't exist. But when we inject a very special dye, we can see these channels permeate the entire body like a three-dimensional spider's web. And in fact, it's called the primovascular system because it forms before all other vascularization in the body, in the embryo. Next slide. And they're very tiny. These are very tiny fibers. So it's not surprising that we've had to wait 200 years in medical science before we can identify these fibers. But they are associated with the spread of cancer, and there's a very, very important lessons for us to study and investigate them. That's why I'm here, to inspire you. Next slide. And it's a real channel. It's not an energy channel. This is an uh, electron microscope image of that vessel. Next slide. And they're like fiber optics. They really are like fiber optics. Next slide. In research, when we shine a light in the eye, it takes a quarter of a second. But when I stimulate this point, it happens super fast. So this is a super fast system in the body, which is not like the old-fashioned copper wire, a synapse, switch, the fan comes on. This is super fast. This is our first relay system. Next slide. So over the years, various uh, scientists have looked at the biofield, what is my subject. Uh, Valerie Hunt did a study measuring the chakras in the 70s at the University of California, Los Angeles. Next slide. Uh, we recently repeated the study that was done in Kaivalya Dam, measuring the chakras of a rishi and inspiring him. Next slide. From this baseline, we have seven channels, one on each chakra. This is calm. We asked him to stimulate his brow and crown chakra. And we can, next slide, we can get an immediate response. So we now have, this is a seismograph, an adapted seismograph measuring the chakras and using nonlinear programming to image them. We've had to wait a long time, but now this technology is widely available. And it's the future for India, because this is sustainable medicine. If I can predict what you're gonna have in a year's time, then I can steer you away from this. It's not emergency health care where we have one golden hour. Your phone is supposed to be off the trail. Next slide. So this 
energy field, what we have, has very well navigated information. For example, when I see patterns on somebody's chest area, it always relates to grief or sadness. Next slide. And all of the different traditions of all the different modalities speak to the same thing. Next slide. So when we see somebody's biofield, we know exactly what this information means. Like for example, this fellow has a very beautiful brow chakra, so he's very intuitive. He has some blue, beautiful blue color in his vishuddhi as he's supposed to, but there's some congestion there. And that's because although he speaks his truth, he doesn't get heard in his office place. So very subtle things can affect our well-being. And when we have a technology like this, we can really assess the emotional aspect, the spiritual aspect, as well as the physical aspect. Next slide. This is a healthy boy as a baseline. Next slide. And this lady, you see, has a lot of pooling and, and uh, congestion in her midriff. This is the region we associate with family. So if anyone has digestion problems or any kind of digestion issues, it always relates to the family. If there's an upset in the family, we'll get digestion problems. Unfortunately, modern medicine too often gives us a pill and they don't say, how's your family life? This is what we call uh, integration, integrative healthcare. Next slide. And this is a lady who's chronically sick. So if we can catch her before even she knows, then we can take care. We can manage our community because each person has their own pattern. Next slide. And it's a journey. When we find someone, this is like an urban young lady with all the congestion of living in the city life, but with yoga and meditation and some energy medicine like EFT, she can transform herself. And this is everybody's right is to transform themselves. Next slide. And it happens with everybody. You just have to accept the challenge. Next slide. And of course we must do research. We must just not give a picture. We must be able to analyze the picture and show in studies what I've been doing for 20 years, funded by UNESCO, um, to do and show what it is we're, we're explaining here now. Next slide. So anyway, I've spoken a little bit about the nadis and the mama points and the chakras. I hope you're inspired to further investigate these anatomical features of the human body. But I think it is important for us to understand what really the chakras are. Because they're not traffic lights. These are not things which open and close and go red, orange, green. The chakras actually are our link to what we call reality. So we're all sitting in this room just now, and I'm making you a little bit aware of yourselves by projecting my energy out onto you, okay? But I'm going to explain exactly in just five minutes what is the chakra's function, and I hope you can use this information in your future lives. Next slide. So we start with a zero point. The zero point could be the bindu, the base chakra. And it's the first breath, the cry. <gasps> My two colleagues introduced this program, the technical session. One talking about high tech, Watson, and the other talking about temples. But we're all talking about the technology of the mind. What the human being is able to create to improve his well-being. That's what we're doing. That's why we're all in the same section. So anyhow, this is zero point is there. And this is the world of potential. This is my first breath. I'm a baby. I don't even recognize myself in the mirror. Yeah? So as I move to the second point, this is the bindu to the navel chakra. This is all about relationships. So this is my first Breath, my first sight is my mother, my father, my brother, my, my cousin, my sister. So I'm building a basic connection between the two dimensions in reality, which is a base point of potential, and the second point is familiarity, the family, the relationship. And that's why this chakra is always about relationships. Okay? Next. Now the third dimension, now this is 3D in here, no? We're talking 3D in this room. 
So I'm only talking about what's on a piece of paper. But now we start talking about 3D. This is the Manipur chakra. This is me, the baby. I know my mum, but I also know myself because I'm a little bit more aware. Now, many people stay here. They're stuck here, actually, because this is just the world. They do a job. They don't live a life. They do a job. Now, the fourth dimension, what we call space-time. We're familiar with it. No, this is space-time. Yeah? This is to do with the heartbeat. The heart gives time. The heart beats, and these lower three chakras act like a gyroscope to keep me in my place. This ball is spinning at a thousand miles an hour, Earth. It's charging with the solar system. We don't know how fast, and yet we all feel still. We feel still because our lower three chakras are maintaining a gyroscopic integrity on this ball. And our heart beats and it gives us a marriage, a relationship with space-time. So that's why I can say, and you can also say, you're here now. Yeah? So here now means everybody's here now. But what do we do with this here now? So we have these other technologies, these other devices, which we can access when we're present. But if we're not present, if we're thinking about the past, or we're worrying about tomorrow, then we're not present. So imagine you're surfing on a board, and your heart is beating. That wave is actually a wave of time. I'm riding a wave of time. And then I can be. A human doing does everything below what I've said. A human being does everything I'm about to describe. What do you want to be? A doing or a being? Okay? Next slide. The fifth dimension is the throat chakra, the vishiddhi. Next slide. The sixth dimension is the brow chakra, anya, ajna. And the seventh dimension is the crown chakra. Now these all relate to cosmos, the divinity, Saraswati, Ganpati, Shiva, what we have as images. This is a divine expression. Now you would agree with you, me, ma'am, that many times people have told you you have a divine spark. Yeah? Well, just imagine this spark is a lot bigger than you, and that's about right. Because we are all divine beings, but we've been closed down a little bit to become a human doings. And India is the nation of waking up human doings to become human beings. And this is why Swamiji is rebuilding the temple. But we all have to actually wake up to the reality of what these higher chakras can do. Thank you very much.